Growing up in Michigan during segregation, Mark McDaniel saw firsthand how divided the world could be when his father became the first in the region to integrate the Electrical Union's apprenticeship program. I remember on Sundays, families coming and talking to, you know, dad about and saying thank you, and I didn't understand, you know, what, what that was all about and until, you know, they kind of explained what was going on. Being exposed to that and seeing, you know, the what one person could do to make a difference. Mark got a degree in urban planning and took a job with a nonprofit development company in his hometown in the hopes that he might be able to make a difference in people's lives. I started working on uh, with a church um, in the east side of Detroit. Uh, it was run by Reverend Ann Johnson. So she had a vision that she wanted to create somewhere where those homeless mothers could actually raise their children and be safe and healthy. And I, I told the State Housing Development Authority about what her vision was, and it turns out they were working on um, a permit supportive housing model uh, to end homelessness. He designed a facility and got it approved by the State Housing Authority. Seeing that project come to fruition was a life altering event for Mark. One of my um, flagship personal accomplishments to be able to have um, worked on that and made it a reality for Reverend Ann. And I learned so much from her about how, um, how important people are that have been marginalized. Um, and, uh, you know, to be able to pull that off for her and then also then see the impact that had on those kids, you know, later on. Um, it, that's, that's why I love this so much. Mark had a good job and was moving forward in his personal life, asking his longtime girlfriend to marry him. We got engaged, well, right about the same time, the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, who knew me really, really well, came and said, hey, got this idea to create a state equity fund that's just in Michigan that can focus on raising, you know, getting investors to bring dollars to the state, and we'd like you to, to run it. Yeah, so I said yes, and then I came home, and I hadn't told Mary that I was actually thinking about doing this, and we'd been engaged for two weeks. So I came home and said, hey, I'm gonna quit this, I'm gonna quit my job. I only got enough money for three years, um, and I have to raise $10 million in this fund, and it's never been really done before. Many thought Mark taking that risk was crazy, but fortunately, his fiancee, Mary, wasn't among them. She was a, my biggest champion, actually through all of this, but in the very beginning, what I didn't know about nonprofits, she did, because that was her world. So she really helped me build the organization in the early days on the things I didn't understand. Our story of what we were trying to do resonated with our investors and what we thought was going to take three years to raise 10 million dollars we did it in about 14 months and with that the foundation was laid for what eventually became Synair. it's a nonprofit, and our focus is everyone deserves the opportunities that are provided by living in a healthy community on the surface most would assume that means Synair simply builds affordable housing but creating real change in the lives of a community is about much, much more. Affordable housing, we do economic development, we create jobs, um, we do community facilities. We found that you can't just provide housing and expect people to have quality of life. It really is about everything that's around them. All the things that when you talk about what's a healthy community, uh, that's what we're here to do is to create those environments for people to live in. And over the years, that approach has seen Sinair grow far beyond what anyone ever expected. Uh, serving nine states, we're now managing about $5 billion of assets of lending and investment, close to 800 uh, affordable housing developments, almost 50,000 units, creating 70,000 jobs. Last count that I checked, probably there's you know 200 more today. It's big numbers. Many would say Sinair's success it's because everyone who works there genuinely cares about making a difference 
following the example set by Mark. He just didn't build Sonair for the sake of building Sonair. He saw a role that that he could play and that his organization could play in really uh, supporting uh, the basic needs of individuals. Just his belief in this community that we live in, how there probably isn't a segment of this community that he hasn't touched in some way. Whether it's building housing for homeless veterans, a rehab to combat the opioid crisis, or coming in early every day to make coffee for the rest of the office, for Mark McDaniels and Sinair, it's all about service. It's kind of about walking the talk, is that um, if you're about healthy community, I, I believe that personally you should be doing something about it. <laughs>